we're with uh, Jerry and Ann Healy, uh, where the videotaping is being done at their home. And also with us, we have, to asking questions here of Jerry and Ann, we have Shirley Cavanaugh and Nancy Bigler. So, and I'll turn it over to you guys. Okay, I have um, several questions. I have my backgrounds in PR and military and all of that, so I am very precise with my questions. I hope you don't mind. Question one is a two-part question. Can you briefly tell us the history of the Highlands Ranch Herald and what inspired you to develop the concept of a network of community newspapers and how do they integrate and connect within this network? So the <coughs> Highlands Ranch Herald was actually started by Mission Viejo as a community newsletter as the community started. And um, it was eventually bought by uh, Sentinel newspapers out of Minnesota. And Ann and I bought it from them in 1994. So the, the, group, the Sentinel group turned it from a newsletter into a newspaper. And when Ann and I bought it in 1994, we took it as a bi-weekly for about two or three years and it became a weekly again. Then, um, but you, who developed the concept of all the community? Okay. Yeah. Well, we only, we only had a few, we only had Littleton and Highlands Ranch in Englewood um, back in the day. So back in the 1990s, that's the three newspapers. So they, they were individually owned at the time and then you bought them out? Or you started the papers within those no, communities? No, no, we, we bought them from Sentinel newspapers. Oh, oh so, yeah, I see, I see, I see. Yeah. yeah, so we started so, with three. Actually, we started with one, one. little paper in yeah. Littleton, and then we bought those three from Sentinel Publishing, including the Highlands Ranch Herald, and then um, we kept those three for until 1997 when we sold them for the first time. So the, the idea of a group was nothing really new to this area. Um, it had been being done for a long time where, where, where community newspapers were group, grouped together. Oh. So it's already started here, that concept. Yes. Yeah. And then how do you integrate um, all your papers? Um, we you have, said you have 27? We have 27 publications. So today we are headquartered out of Inglewood, and we have uh, the 27 there, and each, each county has a small office um, in it, and, um, but Inglewood is our primary corporate office. But they're all local community newspapers. Mm -hmm. It's Golden and Littleton and Englewood and Arvada. With their own staffs. Mm -hmm. we, yeah. we have one staff that, so, you know, it's a pretty lean staff, but yes, their own reporters they cover. And another one that we just did a little um, article about, and I did some research, talked to the architect and the designer, the person who came up with the concept for Town Center and the clock tower, he went back east to his hometown and came back and I had a really enjoyable conversation with John Bigelow and also the um, architectural firm that did the uh, working drawings, MOA Architecture. And uh, so it was very intriguing, but um, it's also we noticed that uh, the clock tower is front and center logo for the Highlands Ranch Herald and I was, we we're just curious as to how you picked that. So with each community we tried to f find something that really we felt like connects to the community and in Highlands Ranch we decided the clock tower would be the, the, the one the one signatory piece of uh, architecture that that the residents could could relate to it was probably between that and the windmill mm -hmm. and, and I think we decided on the clock tower I'm, I'm not sure exactly the, the reason why but that's definitely to me a significant part of the of Highlands Ranch in terms of architecture Thank you. Nancy, I'm going to ask my question three. You okay. just go right ahead. Sure. Okay. <laughs> I, I just didn't want to step yeah, on your... Okay, go ahead. Um, you know, traditional papers are dying out because people, especially the younger ones, and my daughter, that's the reason I moved from Hawaii, she and her family, they're just so busy with their little ones, they don't have time to pick up, the, you know, a physical paper. And they're reading news online. And we know that Highlands Ranch Herald has a digitized version, edition, and do you foresee that... Islands Ranch Herald or any of your community papers becoming fully digitized? 
the, the trend in the industry is definitely towards reader-driven revenue versus advertising-driven revenue. Um, in Highlands Ranch, though, we still have a lot of support for the print edition, and and so we the advertisers still prefer to be in a print edition where um, advertising in a print edition is sort of invited into the home. It's it has it has that perception when on on digital. Um, and not so much on our websites, but in other places in digital, sometimes people feel it's a little intrusive. And um, so, so far, um, our print's doing pretty well. But there is, I hear all the time from people in their 30s, I'm not sure what you consider to be young, um, but they, I hear it all the time that they say the one thing they read in print is their local community newspaper. They may read anything else in print, but on Saturday morning they read their local new community newspaper cover to cover. Um, at some point in time, I do. I, I personally think people do get weary of reading everything digital format, and they still appre appreciate the tactile feel of something in print. So um, I, I don't have a crystal ball, but I know that we're good for at least another five years in print. After that, you know, the world changes so fast. That but at the same time, you've kept up with technology oh, by yeah. digitizing. Oh yeah, the we have a very robust website. Yeah, we have. yeah, we've seen that. We, we actually sell digital advertising to, mm -hmm. to, um, to for marketing purposes to local businesses. We have a whole suite of digital services. So really, the at one point in time, I think people felt like the internet was not a friend of the newspaper business, but that's really changed. The internet really helps us more than hurts us. And um, so all of your community newspapers, all 27, have a digitized version um, edition. Yes, they do. Okay. Yep. Well, given the limited newspaper space for articles, how are stories you receive prioritized and subsequently selected uh, for publishing? Um, well, our reporters are out in the community all the time. They uh, get to know the community leaders, the government officials, the um, everyday people of the community that um, you know that are doing things in schools, in neighborhoods. Um, so it depends on what's going on for the week. You know, there, there's always, obviously, government meetings and school board and city and metro districts um, to follow. So a lot of story ideas come out of that. Um, we receive lots of calls and emails from people in the community as to stories about, um, you know, a cool story about somebody helping a neighbor out or um, some project that's going on. Um, but it depends on what's going on for the week. We always try to, the news value, the timeliness of an issue or a story, but we always try to provide a variety of stories so that um, you might have a government story, a school story, a people story, um, uh, entertainment, art, what's going on, something that kind of covers all the different aspects of the community. Um, and it's really what's, Kind of the best story you know that's out there we is sort of how it's prioritized and who makes that decision out of curious. reporters and editors oh okay yeah because yeah, we, yeah we're yeah we're you know the circle society so we have stories that we mm -hmm. send in and we try to compete with others to get the space oh, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so we're just looking for ways hints from you to Oh, kind of best yeah. get our foot in the door, if you will. Well, there's also calendar items. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a calendar, organizations, places that you can put um, mm -hmm. events or things like that that are mm -hmm. coming up. But, um, you know, if there's a an interesting little tag to it that makes it a little bit different mm -hmm. or unique or mm -hmm. something special, you know, the 50th anniversary or the, the first time that you do something or you know, something like that, then that mm -hmm. kind of makes it a little bit more interesting. But you're right, there's a lot of, Competition. so much that Yeah, there's only so much space, and, yeah, right. You're right, yeah. And then, uh, thank you for mentioning, like, the 50th, because as you know, living in Highlands Ranch for as long as you have, I mean, I'm, I'm a newbie here, uh -huh. <laughs> new Coloradan and new resident, but, um, you know, there is a 50th anniversary this year that um, the society is working together with the Metro District and HRCA, mm -hmm. so we're going to be hoping to partner with you to get a little bit of... Sure, for the yeah, 40th, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. absolutely. For different things yeah. that are happening. Just reach out to me. Yeah, yeah. thank you, thank you. Okay, Nancy, I have, I'll save my other one for later if you want to have. 
Well, you're, you, you're, the very first question, you answered um, very well, I think, what was the genesis from our end of thinking about you, which was how did you start? Uh, as part of the 40th anniversary, we've been going back through old newsletters and everything, and this was the very first newsletter, volume, volume one, number one. Um, in January of 86, and then reading the second, or, and they had a contest for the name, oh. and then the, the very second one um, that was published, then volume one, number two, they had picked a name, Your Hometown Herald, and then when we were looking at then a subsequent, uh, I think it was, this was the third or the fourth one, then it, it, it looked a lot better, but the Hometown Herald, so yeah. that instantly made us think of you, and we thought, <laughs> We have to ask them, because <laughs> it was kind of a burning question, and it was really interesting reading, you know, back from 1986, 1985, a lot of the names uh, are still people in the community, the, you know, the Herald is still the name in the community, so um, that's what started all of this, so we thank you for at least clearing that up. That was my number one question, is how did you come up with the name, and did it have any connection, so. So that was actually before us, but. Yeah, it started before us. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. Good. Yeah, when yeah. we're trying to work real closely with um, HRCA, and so HRCA has these first early editions as well. So we're all kind of we're all you know kind of scrambling that's after great. the same story. So mm -hmm. that's really neat to hear. So, so we moved here in 1994. Okay. So we were yeah. not too uh, too much longer than that. Yeah. Yeah, you weren't. You're you're not some of the original residents, no, but you're early. you were before Shea, and right. while you were still with Mission. Yeah. yeah, when we bought this house, there was nothing south of us. Mm -hmm. We were the furthest south, southern house in Highland Ranch. Really? Oh, wow. yeah, that was all open space. That was all open space oh. back there. <laughs> all yeah. the way. There was wow. no roads or anything. Broadway wasn't punched through yet. Mm -hmm. Wow. It, it ended at no Gateway. Safe, no Safeway. No, no yeah. nothing. Yeah. So, is this a Mission Viejo home? This was a uh, Stanford or Sanford home. Sanford, okay. Yeah. And was the fact that you're so close to the mansion, did that play into your decision in terms of location? Well, at that <laughs> point, we couldn't get yeah. to the mansion from here. Mm -hmm. Wow. We had to go on to Highland Ranch Parkway. Oh, that's right, the Gateway. North. So it really didn't factor too much. It was mm -hmm. just a nice neighborhood. We liked the neighborhood a lot. So. Okay, neat. So it must have been fascinating. I don't mean to jump in, but fascinating to watch the community grow and to see it today. 25, 26 years later. Yes, yeah. It is. yeah. So you still probably saw a lot of wild animals. And <laughs> oh, we used to have, um, was it animal? The uh, pronghorn. The pronghorn. Horn. Pronghorn right in the back. Wow. Oh, good. Right tell, in the back over here. Tell yeah. us about and that because deer. that's one of our next, we, we have, we're doing little, short little articles. We brought just a few of them just to show you, but we're doing short little articles and that's going to be one of the upcoming one. And we're also, we're also um, interviewing uh, Larry Perkins, who was a sculptor who, who did the antelope that's in front of Westridge? And yes. we're doing him tomorrow. We so, haven't seen the pronghorn in a very long, long time. time. So. Yeah. so they wow. were here when you moved here? Well, that yes. was all open space back yeah. there, so, so they, they would come in and they right would to the right up to the fence, yeah. yeah. So, but that's been a long, long time ago. <laughs> so, how yeah. long do you think it's been since you've seen any? Since construction started on the Definitely highlands. behind us, but not even anywhere in Highland Ranch. We haven't mm -hmm. seen them. Mm -hmm. I, I, I love how everything is connected. You know, the antelope are connected, and yeah. the and the uh, the herald is connected to HRCA and to you, and right. it, it kind of makes it fun. Yeah. I stopped over Cabela's the other day, and I was getting out of the car to walk in, and I looked over to the into the back where there's a big pasture back there. There was probably about six longhorns grazing oh, wow. out there. Nice. And it was just kind of like uh, Cabela's. Had them stationed out there, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was. Yeah, you're right. You don't see them around here very often. Well, and I can answer why they were there. Maybe, according to Larry, who knows an awful lot about pronghorn, he says that they can't jump fences. So when you say they were up to your fence, they probably didn't come into your yard. Mm -hmm. Larry yeah. says that antelope cannot jump fences. Apparently, there's some rule that says that uh, on open space and all, they have to make it hot, the, the last strand of barbed wire or whatever high enough so that the antelope can go under. Mm -hmm. And Aunt, Aunt Larry mentioned the, the uh, group that you had seen, oh. and he said they're stuck because of uh, the freeway. Oh. And so they just can't go anywhere. So he said there's a whole, apparently there's a herd of them back there in that, yeah, in in the that area. Yeah. So. 
So uh, in '94, we owned Littleton, the Littleton Independent, the Inglewood Herald, and the Highland Trans Herald. And one of the reasons we lived in Littleton at the time, but one of the reasons why we moved down here was to get to know the community better, mm -hmm. to be a good publisher and good owners of the, mm -hmm. of the Highland Trans Herald. So how do you get integrated into the community then? How do you know them better? Um, because you are the community. Because we shop here, we get on the trails, our neighbors are from here. Um, our kids went to school here. Yeah, our mm -hmm. kids went to uh, three of the same elementary, middle, and high school. Because mm -hmm. since we didn't move, we, we all went to the same school. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, through the schools, we got to know the community. Yeah. Got we went involved to events. In, yeah, events and got involved in community organizations. I was actually part of the very first vision committee for the downtown town center of Highlands Ranch. But I don't even know who was on that anymore. It's been so long. You so. know, I'm just out of curiosity, you said when you bought it there, you bought it with three newspapers, Littleton, Englewood Herald, is that what they're called? Yes. Is it called the Littleton Herald? Littleton, Littleton Independent. Independent, and then HR Herald. Yeah, right. But out of curiosity, why did you pick Highlands Ranch as opposed to Littleton or Englewood? To live or yeah. to? Well, we lived in Littleton for Three or four years. Oh, you were living there. I yeah. see. I see. And this, this was a, a growth area, so, so we felt what, like we oh, needed oh, okay. to come here and get to okay. know it. We felt like we knew Littleton pretty well, but we needed to get to know Highlands Ranch. Well. Okay, that was so the with the Highlands area. Ranch Herald, it was already named the Highlands Ranch Herald. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. So what kind of changes have you seen then from your perspective, both as a business, but also as a family growing up here? Hmm. Well, I mean, population-wise, I mean, it's just been a real growth. Um, I guess you could say, that's kind of a, a tough question in a way. I mean, there was just nothing here, so um, none of the Target Center, none of the Safeway Shopping Center, all that came, you know, after we moved here, I believe, most of it. Um, so, and the schools were just getting, you know, there weren't as many schools by any means as there are now. I think Bear Canyon and Northridge were might, and maybe another elementary school, one of the few elementary schools in the area. Um, so, um, we were all new neighbors. We were all new on the street. Um, so that was really fun because we really got to know each other really well and do a lot of things together. Um, as time has gone on and kids have grown up and moved out and there's been some turnover on our street for a long time. Um, well, there was often a lot of turnover if you, I don't know if you, how long have you all lived here in a long time? Or? I've been here since 2000. Since 2000. So there used to be quite a bit of turnover um, in the early years, I think, but our street never did. It kind of stayed the same for a long time. Um, and then as years went by, more people stayed longer, lived longer, stayed in their homes longer, um, and more of us are growing old, older here. Um, so there's that older population that Helen's Ranch didn't have before. Um, we still have two original neighbors on our cul-de-sac. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That says a lot about you all. Yeah. And, and the area. Yeah. And are your kids in Highlands Ranch or in the area too? Um, no, they've all moved moved out. Well, our son is home. He just graduated last year from college, um, so he's working here in Denver. But um, but our daughters are ones in Connecticut, ones in Arizona. Oh, I see, I see. Mm -hmm. So, what do you do? You have any news events um, at the local level that really stand out that you thought were like you know sentinel events? Uh, well, when we were younger with the kids, the concerts in the park, those were awesome. Um, over at the, oh gosh, just by the post office, the um, concerts in the park. Um, we used no, to go to those a the lot. Highland Heritage. Our, yeah. All three of our kids were very much involved in sports, and they yeah. all got started here in Highland Ranch with the, the Metro oh, District or HRCA Sports. Mm -hmm. That's how they got their, their start, so we were very much involved in that. Um, we do the Christmas celebration, you know, over at Town Center um, pretty regularly, when, especially when the kids were younger. Um, what else? 
I mean, we used the rec to. Centers, we go there quite we a bit. Go to, I use the rec center all the time. Yes, I mean, that's yes. huge. Um, we really, especially when our kids were younger, we really were outside and, and participating in a lot of the community events that were out there. Um, as we've gotten older, not so much. We're a little bit pickier, but. Um, but yeah, I'm just trying to think what else did we. Uh, we use the trails a lot. We use the trails a lot. We really like mm -hmm. the trail, the open space of the trails. Mm -hmm. What about in the paper? Do you recall anything like one or two or three I, um, events that were really compelling that just like, wow, I remember that moment? Black news, you know, things that you cry oh, or. Well, obviously the STEM, unfortunately, but, um, oh gosh, those are hard questions because you have to sit here and yeah. think a minute. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, that was just the day before I flew out of Hawaii, uh, that STEM shooting. Yeah, that was yeah I think it was the 8th of Unfortunately, yeah, yeah, that was yeah. so sad, but that's yeah. unfortunately one of the biggest, you mm -hmm. know, just a tragedy. But I think one of the reasons why people like living in Highlands Ranch is you typically don't have big news stories. Mm -hmm. um, so we do a very good job of covering the schools and we, we always have a reporter at the school board meetings and um, for a long time there was a that was a big news story for us. Um, it's it's definitely simmered down some of recent recent couple of years with the exception of how they handle COVID. Um, but but other than that it's really settled down but for a little bit that was that was big news to our readers, and we covered that very closely. Particularly, I mean, it's such a large student population here, so that's important to a lot of people. So, right. mm -hmm. um, uh, we've, I'm trying to think, we've covered all the rec center openings, yeah. the, all the know, new shopping centers all opening. All the new shopping centers. Um, it's kind of life as it happens, really. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Last year, we did a big mental health series that Anne was directly involved in. Well, it was a couple of years ago, yeah, a, a few years, years ago. ago. Yeah. Well, you were ahead of the time then because now it's the yeah. top. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we did a very deep dive on mental we, health. We collaborated numbers. with um, Douglas County and, and the libraries and held some community forums. Um, so that was great, partnering with some different organizations in the community. Douglas County has always been very supportive of of our papers, which is really nice. So, been good partners. Douglas County it just seems to be progressive in so many ways. Like stuff in the news, just what yesterday or whatever, what is with the COVID and all. Yes. Yeah. Love Douglas County. Well, and so talking about, you mentioned that um, you've you've covered all of the you know important openings and all of that kind of stuff over the years, and we use that material because. We're, and with the Highlands Ranch Historical Society, we've been around since 1991, so just a little bit before you came. So it's also our 30th year anniversary. But we've never really gotten into history very much. And this year, because it's the 40th anniversary, we've, um, we're doing something we've never done before, which is like this. We're, we're devoting our entire year to Highlands Ranch history and with an emphasis on the new history, that the 40-year history, as opposed to you know, the, the mansion owners and all of that of 100 years ago. And so we're just, um, it's, it's been very interesting and we've actually been using a lot of your articles just for our own history to, to try to go back and, and, and our entire years, um, we've broken up the year into like Mission Viejo and we've got Shea coming up and we've got governmental agencies and, and things like that. So we do use your articles, it's, it's real helpful. And one of the things that I was wondering, I just actually spent a day at the library down in Castle Rock last week, I think, looking at microfilm of the Highlands Ranch Herald. It's not easy. <laughs> not at all easy. Um, do you submit either Highlands Ranch Herald or any of your newspapers to any of the digital archive um, services like newspapers.com or I don't think I've, I saw and maybe I have found some on Colorado Historic Newspapers, but I don't think so. Um, yeah. But after seeing all that microfilm, I thought, there has to be a better way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of ways. One is the Colorado his Historic Society, I don't think it's called that, the 
It's the color right? Yeah, yeah. They they take the real old ones and, and, and they scan those. But I think they only go back, I think their grant only gets them back to about the 1930s. So it doesn't help the Highland Dredge people. But we have we have one newspaper that's 100 and I think might be 154, but it's at least 153 years old. That's the Golden Transcript. Mm -hmm. So that's 10 years before statehood, and so very historic and very important information that the state needs to trace trace the state's history. Um, so they do that, but there are a couple of news um, news websites that pick us up that that I know that are used for research purposes. So I'd have to get back to you on that just just to see if they're doing Highlands Ranch or not. I think they are. Um, but right now we do send all of our PDFs to to a database where it's all preserved um, for the future. Currently, I don't think anybody's tapping that yet, but it's there waiting for, for someone who wants to 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 make to make our our print editions digitized. So is that available to us to the general it could public? Be, yes, I think oh. we could make it available. It's not uh, so far. I don't think they have a grant yet to do because almost every newspaper in the state sends it to this place. Well, yeah. just uh, asking about that because of the history, and since you both um, have the journalism background, do you, out of curiosity, it just popped into my head, do you use interns, like high school interns or college interns, um, um, to understudy your reporters or to learn your business? When, when I was um, working there full time, we did have interns, some high school interns and some college, but it's really difficult with. Um, in terms of time for our editors to do that. Oh, okay. So um, at this moment, I don't believe that we have mm -hmm. any, but we definitely have in the past. Yeah, I've had high school, high school seniors working with us, and then college interns, a couple of which have been hired as staff members over mm -hmm. the years, but um, but nothing recently. Just, yeah. yeah. I know you have to go, but. Could I just ask one well, last question? Well, we've got, oh, okay. we still have time. Yeah. Okay, so, um, given your, um, what, Nancy, could I ask this mm -hmm. one? Yeah. What's, uh, what's given you the greatest satisfaction? I mean, because you obviously work hand in glove, the two of you, in knowing your papers are serving as an important conduit of information for the community at large. I'll try to end here on a positive so, note, yeah. Once, once a year, we do what we call something called voluntary pay, and and we because we're a free newspaper here at Highlands Ranch. We're not free in all of our communities, but Highlands Ranch is free. And once a year, we ask for people to voluntarily c contribute towards what we do. And people in Highlands Ranch write us the nicest notes, um, with along with their, their checks about how important we are to the community and how do we, they they want to make sure that we keep up our good work and and uh, they appreciate what we do in terms of covering schools and HRCA and the Metro District and and then um, you know but we see our one of our missions is just to keep people connected in, in today's world it's you know you might get a little bit of next door about what plumber to select or you get it's not true journalism it's not it's 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 not true uh, curated uh, by by professionals and by editors uh, information and and uh, we see that as our primary role is just to keep people connected to their community, um, and that can be through through your, knowing your neighbors neighbors better, knowing your community better, uh, knowing um, things to do this weekend, as well as uh, keeping informed on uh, local local government. Mm -hmm. I mean that is the the bedrock of community journalism is as you. Hopefully, if you do a good job, you're building community, and you're um, not only building community within the coverage area, but because we, you know, you you build geographic community too. Um, you know, the more information you have about each other and about events, the better citizens we can be, um, the more compassionate we can be, um, the more. Um, informed we can be to make better decisions, you know, for for ourselves and for one another. And so I think that's what what we really hope we're able to do with the kinds of stories that eventually, you know, that make it out there that show people, oh, I didn't know about this, or oh, I think the same way. 
Uh, that provides me a different way to look at something, um, different perspective. Um, but that's, you know, that's the passion, the mission of community journalism. So if we can do that, then that's that's the good thing. I want to be very respectful of your time. It's, yes. um, it's that's almost fine. a quarter I can till. Do, I can do I can do he till wants, five till. He wants a picture okay. too. Oh, okay, okay, and I do want to yeah. do a picture. We'll do a picture at the okay. end. I do have a question. Yeah. What got you into the newspaper business? Yeah. Well, I two different, two different stories. Yeah, um, <laughs> I studied journalism at University of Florida and um, started. I mean, I just loved telling stories and. Um, learning about all different kinds of things, which is what journalism provides you with. And so, um, yeah, that's how I started, I mean, as a journalist, and just love writing, love telling stories. So that's my side. He's actually on the business side of, 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 um, of the journalism aspect, but we met in Miami when we were working for the same paper. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. And, and out of college, it was my first job out of out of college, I went to work for the Miami Herald and in their management development training program, and and I got and I met on the softball field. So. Well, you were with the Herald too. Both mm -hmm. of us, yeah. Okay. I met at the, and then, what, were you working as a journalist or? No, I was working side? in the business side. So oh, okay. So that's like the background. And, and marketing. Oh, yes. yours marketing, advertising marketing. Yes, and uh, and and I met on the softball field, and with, I met Anne on the softball field. We played for the same newspaper softball team. Oh, cute. <laughs> and then we went we went to Providence, to the Providence Journal together, and then we got the entrepreneurial bug and we bought our first little paper in Littleton. Providence, Rhode Island? Yes. Okay. Well, good. I, like I said, I want to be very respectful of your time there. Uh, so why don't we, um, we'll... Uh, well, so thank you very much. Yes. Well, let me say thank you very much. Welcome.